Uh, now, that interim report uh, that we, of course, heard yesterday found that Boris Johnson may have misled Parliament several times. It doesn't look good for him, does it? Well, I think we need to remember whose evidence that we're relying on here. This Privileges Committee is relying on evidence now, as has been proven, by uh, a report from the Chief of Staff of the Leader of the Opposition. I mean, th this, this is just ludicrous. I mean, if it wasn't so serious, it would be laughable. We're relying on evidence from a report compiled by the Leader of the Opposition's Chief of Staff. I mean, I just think this makes the makes whole process look utterly ludicrous. Well, Sue Gray isn't yet uh, the chief of staff. And in, fa in fact, the, the committee did did speak out uh, and defended themselves yesterday, saying that, you know, they uh, the findings were not based on Sue Gray's report. And in fact, that it had included a lot more evidence and many more photos. So, you know, you, you can't you can't say that this is down to Sue Gray's report. And in fact, the committee also complained well, that it was difficult to get evidence from Boris Johnson, well, well, which well, suggests he was obstructive. Well, hang on a minute. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And it's actually based upon their own words themselves. They say they rely on Sue Gray's um, report in, in the report that they've uh, published. So, so that, that's absolutely clear. At the end of the day, we're trying... This is a, um, a report which one of the biggest seismic political events of the past 12 months. We had an MP, uh, a prime minister that was elected on a majority of 80, and we ended up getting rid of him on the basis of uh, a, a few photos of a birthday party, which looks, to be honest, not a very exciting birthday party. It makes us look utterly ludicrous to the rest of the world. Uh, and quite frankly, now, it's, I think it goes against all natural justice when we realise that it's based on a report produced by the chief, uh, leader of the opposition's chief of staff. I think the whole thing's ridiculous. Well, you, you can say that, but the Privileges Committee uh, who produced this interim report, the majority of the MPs on that committee were Conservative. Uh, and the report includes one witness saying that the then Prime Minister, of course, Boris Johnson, told a packed gathering at Number 10 in November 2020 that this is probably the most unsocially distanced gathering in the UK right now. Now, you, you can't dispute what, a, what an eyewitness has said, can you? Oh, well, of course you can. Have you seen a picture of it? A packed gathering. I mean, if this was supposed to be a party, it's probably one of the worst parties I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, the whole thing makes is a mockery of natural justice and makes us a laughing stock around the world. You know, I, I'm in Bulgaria right now, and I remember going to an event in um, w with some school children, and all they had to tell me was Boris, 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 because they re they, they recognised what a world leader. Uh, th this person was. And the idea that we got rid of him because of a, a few soggy sandwiches from Sainsbury's is a complete joke. And again, it's um, evidence that this is based upon a report from the chief of uh, staff to the leader of the opposition. It just looks like a complete stitch up. I mean, I just don't understand why anyone could think any differently. You, look, you, you may say that Boris Johnson, you know, is very popular in Bulgaria. I've spent a lot of time in Ukraine. They like him there too. But it doesn't mean that he's popular domestically just because he's popular internationally. And certainly when you say that, you know, he, you know just because a few soggy sandwiches were dragged into Downing Street, that, that doesn't feel fair either when there are photographs of Boris Johnson surrounded by lots of bottles of alcohol. Just why is he continuing to fight this? Is, is, he, is he still trying to make a political comeback to be prime minister, do you think? No, I think he's continuing to fight this because it's a perversion of natural justice. Um, the, the idea, as I keep saying to you, that this is based based on evidence from a report compiled by the uh, chief of staff to the leader of the opposition is just a com is completely ludicrous. I think anyone who looks at this objectively would reach the same conclusion. And you say he's surrounded by bottles and everything else. If you look at these pictures and you're trying to make out that this is evidence of parties going on at Downing Street, it looks like the worst party I've ever been to in my entire life. It's, it's not a party. Anyone who looks at the pictures can, can see for themselves. The whole thing is ridiculous. Of course, Boris Johnson could potentially be sanctioned uh, following this uh, committee hearing. Um, do you think he could be suspended from Parliament? Well, I think if that happened, then we, we no longer live in a serious country. I mean, we, we've got, um, you know, you, you can sit there and you can turn around and say, well, you know, this happened, X happened, it's evidence of, of, of parties in Downing Street. I think anyone who empirically or, or independently looked at this evidence would, um, would realise that that's absolutely ridiculous. Boris Johnson was a prime minister 
elected by um, the overwhelming majority of the country, 80 seat majority. And um, the, the way his reputation has been besmirched, the way uh, this has happened, I think, is, is evidence of not a serious country. Uh, and the fact that is based upon, as I say, evidence compiled by the leader of the opposition's chief of staff, I think goes against all natural justice. Well, she's not the chief of staff yet. And it's she's not just... The job. It's not just Sue Gray. It's not just Sue Gray who investigated, is it? The Metropolitan Police also did, and they issued 126 fines. So, what do you say to that? Well, they issued 126 fines. That, that Boris Johnson didn't get 126 fines. The fine that Boris Johnson got was Nobody for got, one. The soggy, got for the soggy sandwiches and the the slice of birthday cake. That I think, if anyone, as I say, looked at um, utterly uh, objectively, would think was ridiculous. Uh, and you know. You, I think the inconsistency in the police's approach, especially when you look at beer, uh, Keir Starmer um, swigging beers in a, at a curry in Durham, I think, um, uh, well, people can reach their own conclusions, can't they? What does the party need to do to move on? Well, we have moved on. We've got a new Prime Minister and uh, we're, we're getting on with the job. What I'm here to talk to, talk to you about is, um, is Boris Johnson. And uh, as I say, I think... Um, if we're going to keep continuing, continually going down this line, if we're going to continually uh, look to try and affect the reputation of a man who was elected on a, um, on a, on a major mandate, I, I just think, think we're a serious country. A lot of people are today saying that his political future is in peril. He only has a very slim majority in his West London seat. How do you think the future looks for Boris Johnson today? Well, Boris Johnson will make his own decision about whether he wants to continue to fight. He, he, he said he's going to continue to fight. We can sit there and say we can look at his majority, we can look at my majority, we can say, well, that looks uh, pretty pretty um, perilous, doesn't it? But look, the, the people will decide, and I think uh, that, that's what's important. Look, Boris Johnson is a colleague, he's a member of uh, the uh, my parliamentary party. I hope that he continues to do so. Uh, and uh, he's, uh, and, and again, his, I think his reputation it absolutely needs to uh, be defended. He was elected on a, on a significant uh, majority, and I'm sure he'll continue to make a considerable impact on British political life.